curbs. They're the big concrete slabs on the side of the racetrack. But here's a question for you. Why are they even there? Well, back in the early days of car racing, tracks would just go straight from the track to the grass at the side of the circuit. So driving around at a few hundred miles per hour, the drivers needed some curbs to know where the edge of the circuit is by feeling and hearing the car go over the big bumps. But nowadays, curbs have taken on more roles than just that. And so when you see modern drivers at attacking curbs, it's not only to feel the edge of the track, it's actually to take the best possible racing line. And this is because ultimately, using more space throughout the corner means that you can straighten up the car as much as possible, which means the car's gonna go faster. And using the curbs is going to allow the drivers to get the widest line possible through a corner. But it's not all that simple. There are some different types of curbs and lots of different things to consider when you're thinking about taking a curb. So we're going to take a look at the five key factors on why you should or shouldn't take curbs when racing. The first factor to consider when deciding whether to take a curb or not is what corner phase the curb is actually in. When the curbs are in the corner entry, usually you want to stay off the curb during the main braking phase and this is because the curbs reduce grip and therefore your braking performance so you're going to run wide. However, this is different in medium to high speed corners where it can help to move onto the outside curb before turning in to widen the corner radius and this works because the main deceleration part is already completed. When a curb is right on the apex of a corner, it seems intuitive to take a lot of curb because you want the tightest possible line. However, this can unsettle the car slightly and might cause you to struggle with traction as you get on the power. On the other hand, if you are struggling with mid-corner understeer, using the apex curb is actually a perfect way to help rotate the car and this is because the inside of the car suddenly has less grip than the outside, which means it's easier to rotate the car around its centre axis. So generally, as long as it doesn't negatively affect traction, attach onto the inside curbs to get a tighter line. Now the exit is where you really want to maximise space as it enables you to exit the corner at a higher speed. And furthermore, you're able to carry that speed advantage all the way to the next corner. So the general rule of thumb with the exit curbs is that if the type of curb actually allows it, use as much curb as you're allowed to. The limiting factor is often going to be track limits rather than the curb itself, especially at modern tracks. But there is an exception here, and that's regarding slow corners with high powered rear wheel drive cars. Because the curbs generally have less grip, it might actually be faster to go for a tighter line that yields more traction coming out of the corner. It does come at the expense of lower mid corner speed due to a tighter line, but you will be able to make up that speed down the following straight as you're able to exit the corner much faster. The second consideration to make is what the characteristics of the curb are. Curbs come in all shapes and sizes, and so that adds to the complexity of taking them. The general rule of thumb, however, is that the higher the curb is, the riskier it is to use it. So a big monster curb, like you see at Hungaro Ring, definitely carry a much higher risk than the nice, smooth and flat curbs you see at Paul Ricard. A special exception here is sausage curbs. Depending on the car, some sausage curbs can be gobbled up but usually they're placed in areas to dissuade drivers from taking too much curb where they would have done otherwise. The third consideration to take is the type of car that you're driving. Naturally, an F1 car is going to sit much lower than a GT car, and that means that GT cars can take much larger curbs because they're able to simply bounce over them, where an F1 car would easily bottom out, especially on particularly large curbs. In addition to this, the aerodynamic components on a high downforce cars are typically fine tuned to work when travelling perfectly straight, so when you move over a kerb, you could unsettle the carefully crafted aerodynamic balance of the car which is going to lose your downforce and lose your time. The fourth important factor to consider when taking kerbs is the weather that you're racing in, and this is very simple, it's because kerbs are very slippery. The painted nature means that the surface is a lot less sticky than the track's asphalt and particularly on the exit of the corner, touching the kerbs will strip the little traction that's left in this weather and it can drag you right out wide. And last but not least, the way that you should take kerbs depends significantly on the game that you are driving in. Certain kerbs that you might take flat out in the F1 game will definitely cause you serious issues in other simulators and this is where practice really pays off so that you can work out what curbs to be taken, what way, in which game. So to conclude this video on curbs here, the answer on which curbs to take and which to avoid is, it depends. 
when driving, you're going to have to take into account the five points that we've gone over here to decide whether or not to take each curb. And if you do take the curb, and you maybe shouldn't have done, think back to this video and consider the five points here to know how you can avoid that issue in the future.